Now anytime you open up the Excel program, let me double click on the shortcut here, you're starting off with a new workbook and you get the generic name book one or workbook one. Or if you're already working in a workbook and you want to create a new workbook, you, of course you can come up here, click on the file tab, go down to new, and double click on the blank workbook. Well, now I have two open. I have book one and book two. I can just right click on book one and close out of that. In any case, if you open up the Excel program or you create a new blank workbook, anytime you save it for the first time, like for example, I come in here and I type in my data, my text, my numbers, and I click save, it's going to ask me two questions because first of all it wants to give me the option to rename this uh, file instead of the default book 2 is there a name that I can associate with this file like maybe it's my sales file my ledger file that's the first question the second question is as well where do you want to save this file do I want to save it in my exercises folder on my desktop in another folder so I'll go ahead and say I want to save it to my desktop and call it come down here and click in the file name and just start typing and then when I'm done, just go ahead and click Save. So I answered the two questions. I want to save it somewhere. I can use the navigation pane on my desktop or on my desktop. Come over here in the main view and say it's going to be the exercises folder on my desktop. Double click. And then I gave it a name, my sales workbook. Click Save and it's saved. Now after you perform the first save and it defaults to Save As so it can ask you those two questions. Where do you want to save it and what's my name? Then anytime you make any additional changes, like instead of text, I type over that T and I type in some numbers, hit enter. When I click save again, it doesn't ask me those questions. It doesn't open up the save as window and say, okay, what name do you want to give me now? It assumes that you want to save it in the same place with the same name, okay? Just basically updating your workbook. So if I close out of here, I open up the exercise folder on my desktop. There's my sales workbook. Double click on that and there we go. It saved the updates. Now, what if I want to make a copy or a backup of this workbook? How do I get that window back up to save as? Where I can go ahead and save it as a new name or under a new name in a different location or in the same location but with a different name so it doesn't overwrite the original workbook here. To do that, you can come up here and click on the file tab and go down and click on save as. Save As will come up and say, okay, you want to make a copy of this? Then go ahead and choose either a different location or give it a new name. If I choose the same location with the same name and I click Save, it's going to say, hey, I'm going to overwrite your original workbook. Is that okay? Well, I'm like, no, I want to create a backup. So I'll say no and I'll save it in the same location and give it a new name. Let me click in here and I can either call it Backup or Number 2 here and then click Save or I can go ahead and save it on the desktop. So I can save it in the same location as long as it has a different name or I can save it as the same name but on the desktop. But then that might not help you when you've got two files with the same name if you're trying to think which one's the backup. In any case, I'll go ahead and save it on my desktop as workbook number two, which is going to be my backup. Click save and close out. And there we go. I left my folder open. There's my sales workbook, the original workbook, and then click on the icon here and the file reveals the full name, My Sales Workbook number 2. So I've got my backup now. Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but, well, let me open up Excel again. When you come up here and you click on the Save button, because it's the first time you're saving, so it performs a Save As, or let's say we already saved it, and we want to come up here and do a Save As ourselves. In any case, whenever it opens up the Save As window, it's going to ask you the two questions we talk about, but the third one that I didn't really discuss is the save as type. By default it wants to save your data here as an Excel workbook which makes sense. I wouldn't want to save it as anything else would I? Well for right now to keep it simple we'll just leave it as the default in the Excel workbook but you can click on the drop down arrow and you can save it as a text file or a comma separated value file in any case let me click off in a blank area. Leave it as the default but if you notice the default has what's called an extension or better yet look up in the file name. The file name has the name of the file that, well, it's the generic default name, and then it has an extension to that name. This extension tells the operating system, Windows 7, Windows Vista, Windows XP, what file this program should open up in. And if it has XLSX, it's going to open up in the Excel 2010 program. Now, in previous or earlier versions of Excel, like Excel 2000, XP, or 2003, it had the extension here. It always did but it only had XLS. It didn't have this, let me click over here, this extra X. 
The extra X was introduced back in Office 2007, or for Excel 2007, and it continues on in Excel 2010. This extra X actually identifies this file as part of a programming language. It's called the Extensible Markup Language. Hey, you're getting some benefits here by actually converting to either Excel 2007 or Excel 2010. And let me show you those benefits for upgrading to one of those two versions. I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel. Down here on the taskbar, I'm going to go ahead and click and maximize the uh, XML document. Here are the four benefits that you get from upgrading to Office 2007 or 2010. With Microsoft's new programming language, or the language that they added to the Excel files when you save them, Extensible Markup Language, these four benefits you get. The first one is a smaller file size. In other words, it uses a compression that when you save it and you want to email it to somebody, it's going to be a lot smaller than an Excel workbook that you created with the same data in an earlier version like 2003 or XP. The second benefit is that it's improved recovery, so if part of the file is damaged or corrupted, you'll still be able to open up that Excel workbook. Although you may not be able to have access to some of the parts of it, you'll be able to have access to the parts that aren't damaged or corrupt. So that's good. It's better than having to throw away the whole thing. Then the third benefit is detectable macros. In other words, in earlier versions of Excel, 2003 and earlier, you can go ahead and record macros, and I know we haven't covered those yet, but you want to watch my training video on that. When you recorded the macro, you saved it within that file. Well, it's different in 2010. When you want to use macros, you'll save it as a macro file, something separate or outside of the original file. That is, if you want to use macros. And like I said, you want to watch the training video on macros to understand what I'm talking about here. But it's one of the four benefits. And then the final benefit is application integration. In other words, XML is a foundational language that, well, where practically any program can easily share the data back and forth. So in other words, if I have a friend who has a program and I'm sending him Excel and he goes, oh, I can't read this because their program, when they open it up, it doesn't understand the Excel formatting of the data that I put inside the file. What you want to do is you want to strip it down all the formatting out of Excel so you just get the raw data and basically that's what XML can do is it can break it down to the basic language or just raw data so that other person who doesn't have Excel but wants to open it up in whatever program they use can actually view the data and it's vice versa if they have some data and they send it to us in a program that has all this weird formatting that Excel doesn't understand they can strip it down to an XML language in other words the raw data send it to me and I can open it up in Excel then, of course, I'll come out in a later level on Excel more in depth about XML and how to go ahead and import just raw data and export it as well. But for right now, at least the first two of the four benefits make sense. These other two, you can watch my training videos on them. And then, as a side note, let me go ahead and close out of Excel. If you look at the files that are on my computer here, you can see that I have the name of the file and then the extension that tells the Windows operating system what program to open up that file in. On all the operating systems, by default, they hide the extension. If you want to learn more about it or how to turn it on so you can see the extension, in addition to the name of the file, you can watch my Windows 7 training video. I also cover in my Windows 7 training video why I like looking or viewing the extensions and how helpful they can be. In any case, you can watch that if you want to learn more about it.